פרשת בלק. I had a wonderful childhood, but there were a few things that I made a mental note to do differently when I become a parent. My parents almost never said no to me, but from a young age I realized that they were different shades of yes. There was a yes that meant you should definitely do it. And there was a yes that after I did what I was permitted to do, somehow I felt that I did something wrong. In biblical times, just as people believed in the positive power of blessings, they believed in the destructive power of curses. Bil'am, a non-Israelite man, was famous for his ability to effectively curse. One day, a delegation of dignitaries from Moab, an enemy of Israel at the time, tried to hire him to put a curse on Israel. He said that he would be happy to do so, after all, that's how he made a living, but first he must receive God's consent. His power, he explained, is not generated within himself, but it comes from God. So he asked God, and God said, no way. The next day, another Moabite delegation arrived with a much larger amount of money to offer the sorcerer. As tempted as Bil'am was, he gave them the same answer. I must ask for God's permission. This time God said, okay, fine, you can go, but remember, that you are allowed to utter only the words that I put in your mouth. The end of the story was that God humiliated Bil'am on his way to his destination, and when he finally stood on a mountain overlooking the people of Israel, ready to curse them, a beautiful blessing came out instead. Why did God say yes to Bil'am when God meant no? I really don't know. But in this case, I simply enjoy the story, especially because it involves invisible angels and talking donkeys. But as a rule, as hard as it is to say no, it is better and more honest than to say yes when we don't really mean it. Shabbat Shalom.